What up, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. Today we're gonna to cover showing you how to use Cypress IO. It is a functional testing tool or end-to-end -end testing for testing actual websites, websites that you build, websites that you have access to the UI code. <laughs> Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Warden. You can do end-to-end -end while you actually write the code and it makes end-to-end -end tests fun, it's super fast, and it allows you to debug the code. I have an existing website here that I built allows you to track foods and calories and macros. And we're gonna do npm run Cypress. And I've already installed Cypress. The first time you open it, it's gonna check and download it. If you don't have actually any folders or whatever else, it'll create them for you. So you can see here, it's got a, a bunch of examples. And if you look here, it's created a Cypress folder. Fixtures is where all the JSON that you're gonna fake your server comes from. The integration, although it's in end testing and functional testing, they call it integration. That's where all your tests go. So if you're familiar with Mocha, Syntax or Jasmine syntax or Jess syntax, that's it's in there. It's all based on Mocha and Sheenon for doing mocks and things like that. Plugins and support, we don't really care about, it's just enhancing Cypress. So we're going to go in integration here. We're going to delete the examples that it comes with. And we're going to start from scratch and we'll say 01 login spec. And in there, we will write a describe login. And if you're familiar with Mocha Syntax, it should look very similar. And the reason for that is because it is Mocha Syntax. If I log in with an amazing user and pass, it should work. And we'll start off with Psy, which is a global word that it imports for you. Psy stands for Cypress, so we'll say Psy visit HTTP localhost 3000. And I have a server running Create React App locally, which is proxying to my local node server. So this is gonna be a black box test. We're gonna hit a real website running locally with a real server. And so when you go into Cypress now, this, this window, it's gonna test in Chrome and we just have one login spec. So I'm gonna click it and it'll spawn a separate Chrome instance. It's controlled by Cypress. And you can see that it actually has all kinds of controls around it. So this is Chrome, like you're used to. You can do your inspector tools, your networking tab console, et cetera, and inspecting the elements. But this section around here, is actually Cypress. Okay, so we got a regular website, fantastic. We will reload manually the Cypress test. You can see it has login for the scribe and the actual it with a green check mark, meaning that no errors were thrown. I don't really have any assertions, so it assumes that the test successfully passed. And it's, it's smart enough to wait for this. And so each of these steps here, you can see that it ran with additional things that happened during those steps. So while it's visiting, it had a socket call to refresh the browser, tell it either to go there or if you change code to refresh the page, et cetera. So you'll see a lot of these sock commands if you're using something like Angular CLI, Vue CLI, or Create React App. All right, so what we wanted to is test the login actually works with good stuff. So let's first find the username. And if you're familiar with any type of selector, you can just look for things. So we're gonna look for the username and I hope it's spelled a username. Um, let's do a regular factor. Let's see it fail first. So we'll say should not exist. By default, Git will wait for four seconds and keep retrying. It'll do try catch and verify. And if it can after four seconds, look, I could never find it. In this case, we did the reverse. We said should not exist. It did find it and you can see it highlighted in yellow there. So let's take out the not here. And you can see it immediately found it super fast. And you can see I can hover over each one of these steps to show what happened in that step visually. But I can also go back in time in steps. Let's try doing that in Selenium and Protractor and Nightwatch. Blah. Awesome stuff. Now that we have the username, let's type. So we'll say, instead of should exist, we'll say type cow. Hit save and it immediately reloads and types, fantastic. Let's do the same thing for the password. The password is moo. Hit save, it'll automatically reload and you can see it typed cow and moo. Now we gotta find the login button. And I don't remember if that has a data attribute or not. Let's see, uh, login button, no. Okay, this is where when you have the code, you can change it to make it more testable. So we'll go into login view and find the button. There's actually two views, whether you logged in successfully or whether you logged in but had an error. And unfortunately we have a problem with dry. So we'll refactor that later. Let's just get the test working. Then we can refactor it and not have button twice. So for now, I'll say a data attribute of Cypress for login button. And then they need to have a value. 
And let's go add it to the other login button since we don't have very dry code here. Close it. And now we can actually look using a selector, which is a better practice than using IDs because the UI can change, names can change, but your test won't break. At the end of the day, they're looking for a login button. They don't care if it's a link or a button or tag, they don't care. And so data attributes are a lot better practice and they can decorate your DOM. And it doesn't matter how deep the DOM goes, if it structure changes. So we'll do a click on it and it should do a black box test. Black box meaning it actually uses real services. It does a real login and redirects to the food thing. So you can see it worked. Some interesting things happening here. I wanna show you first. You can see the actual DOM query we made and what the type was for it. And you can see off to the right that it found it. You can also see it's doing the git for that and it highlights the login button that we found. But interestingly here, there's two XHR calls or Ajax calls that are using the fetch API that will, one does a post to login, another gets to load the food items for the table. And so these XHR calls are called. Now, if you're running Cypress and you don't see these calls, it's probably because you're using the fetch API in the native browser, which is fine, but some browsers or older browsers can't see it and Cypress is still working to bring that up so it can inspect those calls for you. So the easy way to fix it is to use the crossfetch polyfill. So let's go to the login service and I'll show you. The crossfetch polyfill allows older browsers to use the fetch API, just a normal fetch. It's like promises making Ajax calls, but if you do it this way, you can still use the fetch API, but this allows older browsers and Cypress to actually see those calls. And when we do white box tests, when we mock all these calls for a variety of reasons, which I'll explain in a minute, you can use a crossfetch to allow Cypress to do that. All right, so we can log in now. Let's do the unhappy path. So we'll copy past the coding for the win and say, it should fail if bad user pass. And we'll keep the same stuff, but we'll say ASDF, ASDF, hit save. And now it'll run two tests. The first will succeed and the second will succeed as well. But we need a way to assert that it actually failed. Logging in and going to some page doesn't really assert. And so these tests are really not really making any assertions to say that they work and differentiate. They're gonna give us some false positives. So let's do that unhappy path first. This login failed. We're not gonna see that if you successfully log in. So let's do a really simple way to say, hey, is there text on the page that says login failed? So we hit save and rerun. And you can see that, sorry, contains plural, not singular. And you can see that it'll assert that it found the text. And if you open it up, you can roll down to the bottom and see it and hover over where it actually found it, which is fantastic. And if you want to just make absolute sure in a true regular factor way or TDD way where you make it fail first, we can make sure that this actually will fail it'll wait four seconds and not find that text actually existing. So we'll undo that. Over here, we need to assert that it worked by looking at the table. So let's go to focus on this test right now. We use it.only, so we can only run the happy path. And we're gonna do an assertion to make sure that it found the table. Now what we could do is say like, a side contains of avocado, for example, but I would rather look for like a UI element that indicates a table loaded with data. And the most likely thing for that would be this checkbox here. So if I inspect this checkbox, it doesn't seem to have any data attribute we can do. So let's go to the food view here. We can go down to where it renders. Let's take a look see here. We got a foods list. Let's go in the foods list. I hate this stupid code feature, it drives me nuts. Um, okay, so this is where we draw the table. And do we have a checkbox in here? Okay, so we do have a data attribute and it's targeted to the name of the food. So we could actually make the selector look for avocado. So we'll go sign get with a selector equals avocado, bro, should exist. And so that's our assertion that we actually loaded on the correct screen of foods. We can see the UI element we want to interact with and assert that it actually does exist. And I think I'm missing a quote because I'm a moron. All right, now the second problem is that the server is too slow. So let's go in the server and show you what happens where we have race conditions where your tests sometimes work. And this is what Cypress means about reducing flake. White boss tests can help reduce a lot of flake because they guarantee, assuming all things considered, no latency, your code will always work. And so it surfaces a lot of those latency problems that black box or hitting real slow servers can do. So I'm gonna open the server code here and we will change 
the timeout of this to, let's say, 500 milliseconds for both login and for, where's the food list? The food list, there we go. Restart the server here. Reload our test manually. And see, that time it worked because the server's black box testing is great, but one of the problems with black box testing is twofold. Number one, you have race conditions when your data isn't quite ready in the time. Now we can extend how long Git works. We can say timeout of like 10 seconds, but you don't want to create slow tests. Part of Cypress is to follow best practices of creating fast, predictable tests, not adding timeouts and latency and making your end-to-end -end tests already slower than they need to be. So we're going to do the reverse. We're going to focus on white box tests. And what that means is we're going to mock both login and food list. So let's go to the happy path first, the unhappy path first, because that's a little bit easier. It only has one Ajax call. So I'm going to hit save here. And I'm going to go back to my server and change all the 500s to two seconds again. In our spec here, the way you do it is very similar to Sheenon, if you ever used Sheenon before. The first thing you do is call sci.server. And this, our, Cypress already has a server handling all the cores drama for you. You don't have to deal with cores in Cypress. But you can use it to intercept API calls that your browser makes and send back your own stubs, which is awesome. We're going to go look at what XH car calls we have here. We have a login. And if we go in our network, we can actually take a look at this login and we can emulate it. So we'll do a site out route and has a few parameters. The first is we notice that's a post. So if we match a post and the URL is slash login, the response, we don't really care about the response, but we have to include it. So we're just gonna say empty string. And then the status or status code is a 401. Now you'll know it's working. See how it says XHR right there? The XHR means that that particular call was an Ajax call that was real or black box. Now that I have this Psy route, the, I'm gonna hit save. It's gonna reload the test. Watch what happens now. We've stubbed the call and look how fast it is. So if we take out the stubs, it's 1.3 seconds. If I take it out, it's gonna be up to three seconds because it has to wait for that real server. And that's random. It could take a lot longer, but if we do this, it'll every single time always take one second because we're deterministically always returning the exact same value from login to guarantee that every time this test runs, it'll always work, even if the code didn't change, which is fantastic, right? No flake, increased determinism, fantastic stuff. So that's how you can guarantee your unhappy path always responds the same way. Let's do the same thing with the happy path, but we have to send a response to make it happy. This response, it's just normal JSON it says result true, but the status is a 200. All right, the next problem is, is that because we faked the login, we now have the other failing with the 401 because we don't have the session, so it's breaking there. So now we have to actually mock that one as well. We're going to use a fixture for this one. We're gonna, and rather than hard coding JSON, we're actually going to use a fixture because it's a little bigger than most. So let's go to the server and show what it sends back for food. So it's this gigantic array here. And so inside the fixtures folder, there's already an example in here. We'll create a new one called foods.json. Copy pasta, the JSON, which isn't really JSON. I think the easiest way is probably just node. JSON stringify A. And then we can copy pasta for the win. Cool, so we have our foods JSON. Now that you have your fixture in the folder, let's go ahead and create it. We'll say save sci fixture food list. And you give it a name so you can refer to it later. So we'll call it food list. <laughs> Same thing that it is. So this food list JSON, it's smart enough to go look in the fixtures folder for a .json file. We'll just give it a food list name. So when we emulate, and let's go take a look at what we're trying to emulate here. I'm going to click this, which will print out to the console. So we'll always have to look in the network tab for it. It is an XHR call, that is a git call, and it's looking in, where's the path for it? Food list, so food list. And the response is actually at food list. That is a trick to let Cypress know to go look for the food list fixture. So if you say at, it'll look for any of the as's. In our case, you want it to look for the food list. Now that we have a fixture and a route emulated, when we hit save and reload, I think we called it foods JSON, so let's say, Foods JSON. There we go. 
Now you can see the assert works and we don't have a race condition anymore and it's deterministic because it always loads the same stubs every time. And as far as the UI is concerned, it's hitting a real server. So we don't have to muck around with our source code. Literally just using this uh, test on the background to do a white box test to make the website feel like it's working in a real scenario. If you wanted to, you could increase the timeouts for Black Boss. We're trying to make this a one second successful login that we can assert that that actually checkbox is there and works. And so let's go back to our it.only here. And we'll run both tests and you can see that within less than two seconds it tested both the happy path and unhappy path in our UI. And if you're interested, you can go back and visually see every single step. And also if you're curious as to what's happening for your cert, for example, let's say you're trying to debug things, we can go right down to where we're doing our cert, sci.pause, hit save, reload, and the test will literally pause the screen at that test so you can see what's happening and see how it says paused up here. And so you can go to the next step if you want to, but we're gonna take a look here and see what at this particular portion of the screen. So sometimes you're trying to go to a screen, assert something there, click on something, go to another screen, and it'd be nice and pausing it. In Selenium, that's really hard to do. Or here, you can just literally say pause. When you're ready, just hit resume and it'll resume all the tests. So awesome. One thing you can do from a Cypress perspective is side debug or debugger, that, that works as well. If I hit side debug and reload, it'll open the browser breakpoint tools to the point of where you have the side debug. So if I open them up, it'll catch inside the Cypress code, but that's not necessarily that useful. What normal people do is in your source code, so we'll go to the food list, for example. When this renders, I wanna inspect all these props. Like I wanna see them. So I'm just gonna use the normal debugger. I'm not gonna even set a breakpoint. I'm just gonna hit save, reload. And when the functional test reload my actual code, they'll go to the React code. And you can see I can hover over my variables, see what the values are. It's, Cypress is so amazing, this is awesome. So I hope that gives you an understanding of how you can do functional test, how you can do white box testing and black box testing by using the built-in mocks that they have. And they have really helpful things that look for selectors and they try within four seconds multiple times until it exists. Things like click and send have side effects, so it'll only try one time within the allotted four seconds. But again, the goal is not to increase timeouts, it's rather to fix your UI, and this is why you use this while you're building UI. Notice the code and the tests are in the same code base, and I'm testing while I build my React app, and this is my website right here that I can play with. And if you have access to the source code, you can add you know, data attributes, for example, to make it more testable. And so again, it's, it's really, really fun. I'm Asik Halsoy, who's famous for Cucumber.js, and for behavior-driven development has talked about how the testing pyramid traditionally has end-to-end -end tests at top because they're the last to do, they're slow and brittle and very expensive. And he talks about reversing the test pyramid, mainly from Cucumber, but making them fast, making them fun, and doing it while you're actually building your website. And I think Cypress really, really empowers that. So I encourage you to go to Cypress.io, and I'll go on the other browser and show you. Cypress.io and check them out. They have wonderful docs, teach you all about the best practices, bad practices, how to install it, and some of the certain plugins and certain ways you can add certain things and blah, blah, blah. So again, my name is Jesse Warren. You got any other questions, hit me up on the YouTube comments. I'm on Twitter, Jesse Excel. Thanks for your time.